Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Wednesday, September 8th and the year is 2021. I am so glad that you are with me. It is a YouTube live streaming event tonight. Whether this is your first time visiting my channel or you are back, I'm thrilled that you're here with me. I am going to teach you a DIY pocket card tonight that's a fun fold. And as an added bonus, there are two things. I have a total spin on a stamp set that's gonna blow your mind. It was playing around and it burst itself and I cannot wait to share it with you. In addition to the card I'm gonna be demonstrating tonight, I have another sample with this pocket card for this fun, fart, fun fold. <laughs> in addition to that, I have six more cards to share with you that are all part of this month's card making class. And I'm gonna share those with you towards the end of tonight's live stream. So make sure that you hang with me. Couple things before we get started. First, after the live stream is over, you're gonna be able to find a link down in the video description below. That is below the title. If you are here during the live stream and not watching the replay, Gina is gonna share that link with you, oh, about 20 minutes into tonight's live stream. So hang tight. And you're gonna want that project sheet because it's gonna include multiple pictures of the cards that I'm demonstrating, as well as the cutting supplies and the cutting directions and all the supplies. I am tongue tied tonight because I am excited about this card. I have been so excited to share it with you, so I'm glad that you're here. Now inside that project sheet, you're also going to find a template for this pocket card. And before I go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to my dear friend, Jill, who thought of the pocket idea, and I just put a small spin on the cutting dimensions and made the template for you. Now, a couple other housekeeping items and then we're gonna get stamping. I mentioned Gina's name and I want to formally introduce you to her. You'll see Gina's name here in blue. She is my YouTube moderator. She is also my daughter. You might notice the surname is also Curcio. She is, help, she is here to help interact with you, to provide links for you as well as answer your questions. She has been stamping the entire 23 years with me that I've been a demonstrator. So she's more than capable of helping you. And then last but not least, we love to interact with you. So do me a favor, sign into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address, so that you can either leave a comment on the replay or interact with us during the live chat. I think we're ready. Let's head over the stamp table. I just want to remind you, it is a great time of year with Stampin' Up! Right now, it is celebration. For every $50 in product that you spend, you're going to be able to receive any product from this catalog of your choice. I mean, I don't know about you, but I love selections. There are even a couple products in here in the $100 bracket. So if you have a higher order, you can go ahead and redeem one of those or do two in the $50 category. So don't forget celebration. You're gonna be able to snag all of your catalogs over at lisastampstudio.com. Just request them there. I am going to start with the card base tonight. We've got some brand new lighting here in the studio, so I hope it's nice and bright for you. I know it might be difficult to see, but I did pre-score it before you joined me. And I'm a big fan of that bone folder, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crease up on that. I'm going to use some designer series paper, and I decided to cover the entire front panel of this card. I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet. Love this product because my adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means if I get a little excited and I get off the edges, I'm good to go, and it's not going to mar my work surface or make it really sticky for me to fight all night. This designer series paper is from Harvest Meadow. And because I am covering the entire front of the card base, I am going to be very, very generous. This does have a pattern, and I oftentimes have trouble getting it just right. Does anybody else do that? So I'm going to open this up, make it nice and flat so I can see that crease really, really well. And I'm going to work on getting this filled in here on the front of the card, looking to just kind of center that towards that edge and here at the top. Okay, we're off to a rough start. Do you see this? Have you ever had that happen to you? All right, let's bring in that fancy trimmer because I love this paper trimmer. So we're gonna fix that. There's both a cutting and a scoring blade. The light blade is for scoring. Obviously, this is the dark blade for cutting. They stay on the track at the same time and it's fantastic because it's a clear guide, which is gonna make it really easy. So let's give this a haircut. 
I'm willing to bet that Lisa cut this in half and she didn't cut it in half just right. Yep, that would be the case. So let's go ahead and give that a little bit of a trim. And do you see here at the bottom, I did the exact same thing. You gotta love a trimmer that you can actually see through the track because that makes that cutting really, really easy. So there you go, quick fix. And I'm sure one of you have done that before. So I'd like to show you how we can get that corrected. Now, while I have this out, I'm gonna move over to my next step, which is going to be to make the pocket. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I have a huge little tidbit that's gonna go on this pocket. You are not gonna to wanna to miss, okay? So make sure you hang with me. This is four and a quarter by five inches. So this is the five inch. Along here at the top, we are gonna to do two simple score lines. The first one is at two and a quarter. So I'm gonna line that right up here. I don't do anything straight. So that straight edge up here is a lifesaver for me. So let's go ahead and we're gonna score with that light blade. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide over now to the four and a half, which is all the way over here, and we're going to score. Now what we're going to do is we are going to turn it once to the left, and we are gonna score at the half inch. And I love this trimmer because there are actually some measurements on this side as well. So that gives me more to hold here, which makes it a lot easier for those little score lines. And that is it, okay? So let's go ahead and put that trimmer off to the side for just a moment. And I know again, that might be difficult to see, so I'm gonna kind of turn it. And I'm also gonna kind of just score up on those lines with that bone folder. Whenever you're making a fun fold, it is critical that you go over those score lines because you want your card to lay well. Now you're gonna see here that we've got some areas here that we're actually gonna do some cutting way at because it doesn't really look like a pocket much. And I'm gonna use my paper snips. Now, all the products that I'm using tonight can be found in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. This little corner right down here, we're not going to need. So I'm just going to cut this little guy right off. I just find it's more trouble than what it's worth just to have it there. And don't pull because I have a habit of just wanting to pull when I snip. Does anybody else do that? All right, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cut this on an angle. I find if this is a little bit of an angle there, it makes it a little bit easier for me to actually crease up and add my adhesive. And then I'm actually leading a slit here, and then we are going to cut here as well. All right, and again, I keep telling you not to pull. Look what I just did. And then here on this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna create another angle. These areas are actually where the adhesive is going to go, and I find this makes it a lot easier for me to be able to fold everything up. So I'm gonna bring back in that silicone craft sheet. Now I'm going to tell you in my original pocket, I used the multi-purpose liquid glue. This is sold in my online store. This, however, is not. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, and I do want to call your attention to it because we get lots of questions about it. It stores your glue upside down, so it's always ready to use. You're going to find this on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, and I love this little glue holder. Just for tonight, I am going to use adhesive because I don't want to wait for the glue to dry, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to take my Stampin' Seal Plus and I'm going to place it right here along this half inch side. So I'm just going to get that started and I'm going to run. Now the one thing about Stampin' Seal Plus you need to know is it's extremely strong. So if you're having a bad day and you're pressing too hard, it can do a real number on your cardstock. Then right here, we are going to need to actually take some of that adhesive and place it here as well. And you know what? We don't need this. Let's cut this off. That's just more trouble. We don't have to deal with that. Now, don't forget the template that is in your free project sheet is going to have all of this for you. It's going to make it nice and easy. I'm opening it up so I can add a little adhesive here as well. No reason to add all those extra tabs, right? So we're going to close this and we're going to close this and then we are going to make our pocket. And you can see how I fold it up just like it was a book. If you have scored and cut correctly, that's gonna make it really, really easy. Do you see that little pouch? All right, let's move these off to the side. And I'm gonna come in now with a punch. Now this is retired, which is why it has a little pink sticker on it, which means it's no longer sold in my online store. But if you're a paper crafter, you've got a myriad of punches and circle dies, okay? And I could not part with this one because we're going to use it for the next step. And for that next step, I want to decorate this pocket. And I took another piece of designer series paper from this exact same package. It's just a different color. So let's go ahead and let's flip this over and let's add adhesive to here. Now I'm going to tell you that if you wanted to stamp or emboss your pocket, you obviously can do that before you put it together. And then I'm gonna add adhesive around the edges because I certainly wanna make sure that I've got it well covered. Making sure that my opening is on the right, that's going to be important for this card. 
I'm going to do my very best to mirror this along the top and the sides. And then once I'm happy with it, we're going to press that in place. Now, typically, I never recommend punching through two layers of cardstock because punches are not meant to do that. But we're only going to do a tiny, tiny bit because I want to create a notch here so that we can pull out the little tag we're going to place inside. So I'm going to put my punch in from the front, loading from the top. I'm looking here and here to see if they're about equal. I'm only going to go in a little tiny bit of the way. And then once you're happy with it, you're going to really give that a good squeeze. And that's going to send paper flying all over your stamp table. But that's a good sign because that means it's not going to be inside your punch. So now we have this. Now, I am actually going to set this aside for just a moment. We're going to come back to that and we're going to do something with it. But I want to create an insert for that as well. But let's do that in just a few minutes because now I'm getting to my favorite part. This is the little twist that I want to teach you tonight. So this is scrap white cardstock that I have here. And I've got a crumb cake ink pad. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I also have early espresso. So a light crumb color and a darker brown. All right, now I'm going to tell you right now, hang with me because this is about to get really, really fun. There is a stamp set that I have really found quite versatile. And you might be looking at this thinking, no way. A Halloween stamp is not versatile. Oh, wait until you see my cards. So if you think this is just for Halloween, yes, again, we are going to use this. Tonight, I'm taking that little skull and I'm inking it up in the crumb cake and I'm going to stamp that here. All right, so we've got our little skull head. The next thing I'm going to do is I've grabbed what is now the solid image that fills the skull. But you know what? We're going to turn it upside down. This is the raised edge that you would normally ink. So I'm going to turn it upside down so we have the flat image on the back. And I know one of you thinking, what are you going to do? Now watch. Scratch piece of paper. I'm going to ink it up in the crumb cake. I am going to stamp off because I want it lighter. And then we are going to stamp this over this. Photopolymer makes it relatively easy. You can see where you're going, which is fantastic. All right, I'm taking that off camera. And now I'm going to push that off to the side for just a moment. And inside that stamp set, there's a little face that's intended for one of the skulls. But nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to flip this around and we are going to stamp it here. Do you see it? I'm hoping so because I have got a great project idea for you with this Halloween stamp set. All right, the next thing I did was I went ahead and I took my scissors and I fussy cut it, okay? And I'm not gonna do that on camera because we all can cut, okay? So that left us with this. I did take my crumb cake coordinating marker, which is the fine tip here. You'll see there's a thicker, thicker tip here. This is a dye-based marker. This is not an alcohol-based marker. And all I did was I made little stitch marks here around his face. Okay, so far so good. So let's push this off to the side. The next thing I did is I grabbed some of my other punches. And my first one was my strawberry builder punch. Now a builder punch has numerous pieces on one punch. And I find that if you cut your cardstock in a strip, it's gonna be a lot easier to use if you want just one or two of the pieces. Now, I did do that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. And then there's our little strawberries. But here comes the fun part. What we're going to do now is we are going to take one of these and we are gonna take our scissors and right about here where it starts to change shape, we're gonna cut this. So now we have two pieces. This is the piece you're going to save. Now, if you find that this piece is not gonna to work too well for you, what you can do is you can punch another one, which is what I've done here, just as a little bit of a backup, but I'm gonna cut just like an angle here and do not fret if it's not straight, none of us cut straight. Now on my other one, I added a little bit of designer series paper here, but I wanna show you what I did. I took a wedge of one of the stamping sponges and they come in a circle and I just cut it up so it makes it easier for me to hold with my hand. And I'm gonna ink this up and then I went around the edges. Now there's a lot more to this, so hang with me because wait till you see this come to life. That's gonna actually give some density to those edges and I did the same thing here and I think you guys get the idea. I'm not even gonna go through the whole thing. All right, what I did next was add these pieces together. So let me get my silicone craft sheet and I'm going to tell you that if you're gonna add a brim to your hat, 
you're going to want to actually add that little piece of designer series paper next. You also want to make sure that your outside edges are going up. That's going to give it a little bit more character for what we're shooting for. You are going to use the multi-purpose liquid glue. Now remember, I have a precision tip applicator that you squirt this in. That's going to make your life really easy for these tiny areas. That's in my craft room favorites under shop at lisastampstudio.com. So basically what would happen is this is going to go on top of here. Do you see it? Okay. Then what I did is I went back to that marker and I did the exact same thing. I put a little bit of stitch marks here and a little bit of stitch marks here and a couple here just to give this a little bit of character. When it was all assembled, we're just going to pretend because I'm walking you through this. I've got one that's done. Remember, this is adhered. This is now the back side. You're going to take your adhesive and you're going to add adhesive here. Now I got crafty because if you're like me and you're a crafter, you've got all kinds of things in your artillery, right? And one of mine is raffia and nothing screams straw like raffia, right? <laughs> That's really what it is. So what I did was I separated this and I literally just let it hang down the hat. Simple, right? And then what I did is I took this and I made my little face. Well, Obviously, what's going to happen is when all this is assembled, you're going to have hair hanging here. So let me show you what I did. Let's push this off to the side. I literally just gave it a haircut. I took my paper snips and I just gave it a little bit of a haircut. I didn't even care that it was straight. That's the whole point. You do not want this straight. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put these two pieces together. Remember, this was the skull, remember? And we're going to attach that here. Now the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and put adhesive here. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my stamp and seal plus and just add that right across there. Any overage is fine. It's going to work to our advantage. And then what we're going to do is just kind of angle this. Now if he's having a bad hair day, just take your scissors to it and cut it a little bit more. It couldn't get any easier. But wait, because I'm not done. All right, so let's go over now and let's go back to our pocket. No, you know what? Let's go ahead and add a scarf to him. I decided to do that next. This is just a simple one inch square of designer series paper. It's the same one I have here. This one came from Peaceful Prints. That's one of the free designer series papers right now in the sale brochure. You can get it for free with any $50 order in my online store. So the easiest way for me, obviously you can cut it um, on the diagonal, but you know what I did? I cheated. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive here. And again, you might want to use liquid glue if you like things to dry a little bit slower. And look, now he's got a little bandana scarf. Isn't that cute? Okay, not done yet. Remember that strawberry punch that we just made the hat from? Check this out. This is the stem of the strawberry. I cut it from the same designer series paper and that left me this. Do you already see it? Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come inside of here and I'm just gonna kind of lop this away and round this off. Nothing pretty, okay? Nothing fancy. I'm gonna turn it upside down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eventually add that as my knot. So I've got my mini dimensionals here. I'm gonna place that right here on the back or you can use a glue dot if you're you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable with that. Let's go ahead and add this little guy. Well, let's put it underneath his hair. So let's go ahead and add that right about here. Okay, isn't this adorable? Okay, but we're not done. So let's go back to this. I made it this color on purpose because I decided to jazz it up a little bit. And this is where my black Stampin' Write marker comes into play. Now the Stampin' Write marker, again, is a dye-based marker. Keep that in mind. These are not the alcohol-based markers that I'm using tonight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some squiggle lines. Ready? So I'm gonna work, oh, just about here. It, you don't want them straight, so this is perfect if you can't draw a straight line like me. And we're going to do another one here. And then we're going to add a couple cross hatch marks here and here. And here and here. All right? Now, let's start putting this together because believe it or not, it's pretty much done. Let me close up that ink pad because that's always a recipe for disaster around here. And I'm going to move this out of the way and come back here to the card base. And I'm going to show you how the pocket is going to work for this. I am going to place adhesive on the back side of this and I'm gonna actually flip it over and I'm gonna use my adhesive, but I'm going to recommend at home you do liquid glue. Remember, this has a little weight to it and I find that the liquid glue is gonna hold up better in mailing 
for one reason. It's going to hold up better to the humidity and the rollers that your cards go through at the post office. Now, obviously, you can pay for additional metering so that it's hand stamped. You can do all that. But just for tonight, because nobody likes to watch glue dry, right? Let's go ahead and just add that here. And I'm going to be just really generous because I want to make sure it's going to hold up during this live stream. With the opening now on the right hand side, this is going to go near the bottom. You're going to need to leave, oh, about a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to press this into play. Okay. Remember, your pocket is still here. Do you see it? All right. Now let's go ahead and let's add our little guy. So he's going to go up here, but he's not done yet. So hang with me. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and I'm going to add dimensionals to mine because I want to lift it up just a little bit. So I'm going to add one up here and let's see, I'm going to add some others to actually secure some of these pieces. So let those dimensionals do double work for you. And I'm also going to slide over now to some of these mini dimensionals because I think they're going to fit a little bit better here and here than trying to squeeze another dimensional in there. I'm going to use that take your pick tool. I've got my paper piercing tool attachment on the back. I cannot live without this thing. I use it for everything. And then that is going to be our little guy. So we're going to add him now up here at the top of the hay bale. Are you getting it? But I thought he needs hands, doesn't he? He looks kind of weird. So, okay, let me show you what I did next. I grabbed another punch and I know a lot of you have this one because it's been immensely popular. This is the penguin punch. Do you see those little penguin feet? Well, guess what? Now I did do this ahead of time just to save a little time with you and don't go away. I've got one more pocket card to share with you and I've got six others to share with you on top of that. And then look, again, more raffia to those little penguin feet. I literally put a glue dot on there and then just gave it a haircut. Now this is what we're gonna do this time. I am going to grab a glue dot and we are going to attach these with a glue dot because I found that is the absolute easiest way. Now placement for this I found was actually kind of important because I want it to look realistic. So let's go ahead and add our glue dot here and obviously you can use more if you feel a little bit more comfortable or even of course liquid glue. So there's that take your pick tool once again. You want his hands to be fairly close to the bandana because you want it to appear as if he is peeking over the top. And then I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to use that tool to my advantage and up underneath here and we're going to attach that one here. Okay, we're almost done with the card. I decided that it needed a greeting here. It was a little bit naked for my taste and I did this ahead of time. Okay, this is called um, from a wish for everything or time of giving I think is where this came from. And I sponged the edges just like I did before with the hat. I already got the dimensionals on there to save a little bit of time for you. And then I'm going to place this right smack dab in the middle. Now let's talk about the greeting. I stamped it ahead of time from a wish for everything right here in the middle with the early espresso. But you can see that if we place it in here, it doesn't have anything to pull it out. So I took that exact same three quarter of an inch circle punch with the exact same designer series paper. And I got myself this and we're going to pinch that in half. Again, I'm going to recommend liquid glue, but just to save time, we're going to add a little adhesive here tonight. And then what you're going to do is you are going to pinch this in half and you're going to visually try to find the center and then you're going to press this down. Then I'm going to go to my one and eighth inch handheld punch. Now you may have a crop dial that works well too if you've got one of those and we're going to punch a hole here. One thing about a hole punch, wiggle it to get it out. Don't pull. That's really, really important. But you know what? I wanted to keep with my theme. So let's do this. Remember this piece of raffia? Take your raffia. This is about eight inches and I'm going to fold it in half. Grab yourself a strand that's a little bit thicker than the others. And you're going to just kind of pinch that end. You are going to work from the front to the back. Very, very simple. Once you've got it through, don't be afraid to open it up. Give yourself a little room here. And then you're going to take those front ends and put it to the back. Very important. If you would have had a bad day and you're attempting to pull these at the same time, you're going to have a hot mess on your hand because you're going to rip that hole. So all we're going to do is we're going to lightly pick up that tension. And of course, I've got a little slick spot in the back that doesn't want to pick it up. There we go. And then watch what I'm going to do next. Now, obviously, we're going to cut these because those are just a little bit too long. But I wanted this to look a little bit more whimsical. So here's that take your pick tool once again. And I'm literally just going to shred that raffia to make this a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more 
rustic look. And then watch, this is going to slide right inside of here like this. And then there's your little greeting. Oh my gosh, is this not adorable? And here's the best part. Plenty of room still on the inside for you to write a personal message. Now the cutest Halloween stamp set is offered as a bundle with this punch. And you're gonna want both, cause hang tight, cause I'm gonna show you what else you can do with it. Now for those of you that enjoy Halloween cards, making them for the grandkids or nieces and nephews, I've got one more for you here. And this uses the exact same bundle I just shared with you. So it was the stamp set and the punch. And this time I actually embossed the outline image of the ghosts and the eyes on vellum. And then I used the punch to punch them out. And look, there we go. Hey, boo. That's a very common saying right now among the younger kids. I had to ask Gina what it meant. But super duper cute cards. And again, Halloween, not Halloween. But are you ready? All right, the next cards I wanna share with you are actually part of this month's online card making class. Now, a lot of people are gonna look at this and think, I don't really do Halloween. I just, it's not my gig. Okay, so I got you covered. Are you ready? All right, let me reach over to one of my other totes where all my stuff is, and let me pull out these cards. Now, the cards I'm gonna share with you next are part of that online class that we've just talked about. There are going to be six cards. I want you to keep in mind that I have designed three of them as fun folds that can be any occasion and any stamp sets whatsoever. You do not have to buy the stamp set. You do not have to make Halloween cards, but this is one of the fun folds. Look at this, isn't this fun? And what's really great about this is this month's card making class is going to provide you with an entire video step-by-step to make the three fun folds and three other cards that are not Halloween. All right, here we go. Look at this uh, fun fold. All right, wait till you see how this opens, but are you ready? It's not a Halloween card. I made it an over the hill birthday card. Let me show you how this opens. Ready? This is going to come down and this is gonna come out. Oh, super duper cute, huh? So another great use for the stamp set it's really going to expound your purchase. Lots and lots of fun. But here comes another one. This is the other fun fold. Keep in mind, you can use any stamps of your choice, which means you are going to get a video to stamp right along with me from home. You're going to get a PDF tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions, pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies. Isn't that fun? I just keep wanting to do that. So you're going to get all these three cards, plus I got three more. So it's six cards for this month's card making class. It is only available for a four day period. It starts today, which is September 8th, 2021, through Saturday, September 11th, 2021. So you can see that I use some Halloween papers here, but look at the sunburst. You can use florals and put a flower. You're gonna design, you're gonna design your cards however you'd like so that you can use them. I specifically use the stamp set because I want to expound on what else it can make besides Halloween cards. So please keep in mind that this month's class is extremely versatile. Here's the other one. Look at that pumpkin. Well, you're probably wondering, well, the pumpkin in that stamp set doesn't look anything like that. Well, yeah, because my video is step-by-step -step and it's gonna give you a ton of tips along the way. The PDF tutorial, again, walks you through for those of you that are able to want to read instructions. I've got some of you that love to do both, but check that out. How about a non-Halloween card using a Halloween stamp set. Lots and lots and lots of fun. So just to recap for you, this month's card making class, four day ordering period, you must use the exclusive card making class host code of at least $50 in product or more. Otherwise I have no way of knowing that your order is for card class. So the exclusive host code and any $50 product order, if you do not want to order the stamp set and you want to be able to make the fun folds and all those card layouts, you're automatically included. So I made it really versatile for you. Also very, very important. If you happen to have a very large order and it's $150 or more, please do not use the host code because Stampin' Up! is going to give you what they call Stampin' Rewards. That's additional benefits. So don't use the host code. 
But if your order is that large and it's intended for the card class, it's imperative that you contact me at lisastampstudio.com and let me know that that order was intended for this card class so that you'll get the full length video and the PDF tutorial, which by the way is like 20 some pages long. Now, some of you are probably wondering, is the PDF tutorial available by itself? And it is because I always keep my Stampin' Up! demonstrator friends always in the loop. So therefore, the PDF tutorial is available over on my website under classes in my PDF tutorial library. I charge $1 per page for everything. It does not include the video that is exclusive to the class. So again, that video is going to allow you to stop and start and work at your own pace as well as that tutorial. So I would love to have you join us this month for the card making class. Now, I'm glancing over at my notes really quick because I wanted to make sure that you know about the added bonus for your card making class order, as well as all orders with Lisa Stamp Studio that are $25 in product or more. You're going to be invited to a private event called Live with Lisa. It is held right here on YouTube, but like I said, it is private. So I'm going to send you a private unlisted link. That event happens at the end of every single month where I do two live demonstrations with you and you get a total of eight tutorials and I do product prize patrol. It's done randomly for everybody who has placed an order, whether you are watching live or replay or not at all, you're all included. So a lot, a lot of fun for this month's card making class. I sure love to include you. Head over to lisastampstudio.com and if you're brand new there and you scroll down about halfway, you're going to get a pop-up that asks you to sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter and I sure hope you're going to do so because I share a tutorial project in that newsletter every week that is not shared on any of my other platforms and I would love to include you. It is a no frills email so make sure that you sign up. It's a great way to get new inspiration. Every single week comes right to your inbox. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that and hit that uh, bell icon that's next to it and the word all. That's going to send you reminders when I'm live because it's coming back in just a couple days. I'm going to be live with you again on Monday, which is September 13th at 8 o'clock Eastern Time Ooh, for some really fun inspirational backgrounds you are not going to want to miss. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so or mark your calendar. Gina, thank you so much for interacting with everyone tonight during the live stream and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great night.